Asia. Hey guys, Anasia here, and welcome to Terra. I don't know. Okay, I'm just gonna be very straightforward with you guys. I don't know if this is gonna be a long-term series, how often it's gonna be on my channel, but I just wanted to kind of play this game. I, I, I wanted to play this game. That's the reality of the situation. <laughs> I have really loved playing Terra over the past few years now, actually. It is an MMO, RPG, if you want it to be, and it is free to play. That is one of the things that I absolutely love about this game. The graphics are amazing and the interactive combat system that they have is unlike any other MMO that I've found so far. Just the combination of everything. I really love this MMO more than any of the others that I've played and I've tried quite a few. So I decided, you know what, why not go ahead and just do a let's play of a single player, you know, going through the whole quests, all the quests and some of the storyline. We, I figured we could kind of explore it together. I haven't really delved into doing like a single player experience too much. I mean, I have played several characters on and the different classes and stuff just to see what I like, see which one I prefer. But in terms of like really getting into the story, I have not done that because a lot of the other times that I've played, I've been with friends playing this game or playing with my husband, actually. We played this quite a bit. So I decided to go ahead and create my own solo character and kind of get through the story that way. Now, in terms of there are plenty of servers to choose from, and the newest one is actually High Watch, which I hadn't seen before, but I wanted to show you guys first. I think we'll probably, maybe we'll do one on here. No, we'll do one on High Watch, but I can at least show you guys some of my characters that I have. Now, they just redid the whole new player experience, so I don't know what that's going to be like. It's supposed to be on a new island and everything. So here are the characters that I have played the most on, I think. This is my main character. Ine, she's a guardian, or er, berserker, sorry, it's similar to a guardian in another game. Uh, she's a berserker. She's The highest level is 38 that I have, which isn't super high. Like I said, I haven't gotten super far, but that's because I've been playing with other people. I also really like playing as an archer. I think that, that has become one of my favorite ones to play on, but it's not as easy to do as a solo player. I also have a priest that I play with some friends as a more support character. And then this is the newest class and I created this character to kind of experiment with it when it was released and it's pretty cool. It's called the gunner class and it's like a ranged tanky character. So it's kind of interesting. Anyway, so those are the characters that I have. Let's go ahead and go back to the High Watch server. That's where we're gonna create our new character. I love the transitional graphics. Just the graphics of this game as a whole are phenomenal. Uh, I also really enjoy the character designs and stuff. Uh, I have to say, <laughs> the female characters are definitely on the more scandalous side. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, that's just how some games are. I'm kind of okay with it because they're pretty badass all the same. So, uh, I've made these two experimental characters, and I'm kind of torn, because I think for this play playthrough, I'm going to be a gunner. I haven't really done a gunner class before, very in-depth. I've only done, like, the initial stuff, and so I think that might be the funnest one to do as a solo character. Here are two that I created. I take forever to create characters, so I figured I would do a little bit of the experimentation off-screen to save some time. But we can either be a high elf if we want, or we could be a Kastanic, which are kind of like these little shorter, more spunky people. I think we're going to go with being a Kastanic. So what we'll do is I'll go ahead and delete this character. I also have like lots of spare characters, just to, like reserve names and stuff. So we click new character. The character customization of this MMO is one of my favorite things about the game. <laughs> And they just redid this portion. It used to be where you would select your race and gender and then you would go into the classes and choose your class. But now you can do it all on the same screen, which is pretty fantastic. So we can just immediately click and see some of the different classes as a male human. 
So, okay, let's talk about the races. I did a video on these things, like, several, it's been over a year, I'm sure, by now, kind of explaining all of the different races and stuff, but they've actually updated some of that stuff, so I figure I'll do a quick run-through. They do have human, male, and female. That's kind of the Lancer, the tanky one. I'll get to the classes in a second. So they have humans, they have the Kastanics, and each... Each race, like many MMOs, have specific skills. So they can have a faster sprint ability for a limited amount of time. They can do dirty fighting, so they have an increased crit chance when they attack from behind. Uh, increased crafting speed for metallic weapons and decreased fall damage because they're a little uh, jumpy people, basically. Now the Kastanics are pretty cool because they're like kind of dark elf. They have like basically light elves and dark elves and is how I see them in a way. And I like that they all have these horns too. The guys though, look at these guys. Look at that. <laughs> pretty, pretty funny. They're like the, I don't know what you'd call them, the preppy boys? They're like super into themselves, I feel like. I feel like that's what these guys look like. But anyway, uh, then we also have the Amon, which these guys are like a dragon-human combination type of deal. They're pretty awesome. I do really like the female ones because they they just have a really cool look. They're also very tall and pretty bulky, so they're pretty neat. Then they also have the high elf, which is kind of the light form of elf. Pretty cool. The women all have huge <laughs> breasts, though. <laughs> like, uh, could you not move around so much? Just calm, calm down, calm down, girl. It's a little bit distracting, I admit, whenever I play a high elf. I'm like, could you just, like, hold still and look at, like, who moves like that? Who does that when they're just standing? Nobody. It's just weird. But they are pretty cool. I do like the high elves a lot. The boys are kind of funny. They always, as you, like, level up their... Uh, armor and stuff, you'll get some fun colors like pink and like this. <laughs> They're a little more on the feminine side, which is kind of cool. I do like that they have kind of gender neutral sort of ish options. It's kind of neat. Then you have the Papori, which are genderless, but I think they they all pretty much look male, kind of. But you can get them in different little things. So they've got like little beavery things and badgers and bears and cats and a little husky type of thing. So they've got <laughs> lots of little options for these guys. A panda. A little raccoon. They're super cute. And then that. Yeah, so there's a couple options. There are a lot more options than what you see just right here. You can customize so much. We'll get to that. Now there's also the Elen, which I really like. They are adorable. And they're just these little kind of pixie people. And they have little ears and a tail. Aren't they so cute? I've played as a Lin quite a bit, actually, um, on different accounts, just because they're so fun. And they, like, prance around, and it's pretty exciting to have them prancing around, like, destroying giant monsters and stuff. All right, and then we have the Baraka, which are, like, these stone ancient men. And one of the cool things about these guys... Where is it? Your stamina. Yeah, it's that one. Okay, so when you're out doing quests and stuff like that, you have a stamina amount, and once it drops to zero, you have to go, like, recharge at a city or something. Which, it takes quite a while to drain. But the Baraka don't have... They won't ever fall below zero, so that's kind of cool. Kind of a neat feature of these guys. They remind me of, like... What do they remind me of? They remind me of, uh, in the fifth element, you know, the aliens, <laughs> the turtle guys. I always thought they looked like turtles, but that's what these guys kind of remind me of in a weird way. So these guys are pretty cool. All right, so we're going to go with Kastanik. We're going to be female. Okay, this is going to be a very talky episode. We may just kind of get through this character creation. That might just be all that's in this video, so you've been warned. Uh, so the first class that we'll talk about is the warrior class. This is one of the coolest classes, I think, on this, because even though, see, it's a full complexity, it's a more difficult class to do, but that is because it can go, it can do 
so many different things. It's a very flexible class. You can kind of build it more tanky, or you can be more of a damage person. So it's great for soloing, I think, from what I've heard, because you can kind of fall into different roles as needed rather than just having like one thing that you can do or one thing that you're pretty well built for. These guys are pretty cool. You can also, some of the skills that they have include like being able to dodge things really well. So you can jump around and kind of avoid your enemy's attack, but you also have a blocking ability, which most of them either have just a block or just a dodge. And this one actually has both, which is kind of cool. All right, the Lancer. This is like your classic tank. You know, the one who's going to be tanking, taking all the damage, using that shield and blocking all the incoming damage and then providing some attack too. They're pretty cool. Uh, I haven't, I've played a Lancer a little bit, but not much because honestly, like for myself, I like being able to move around a lot. And these guys, usually when you're fighting, since you're just kind of, you're being that firm rock, you know, you don't actually get to move around as much, at least in my experience. And I could, I could be wrong. Maybe, maybe you can play a tank like that and just jump around all over the place. <laughs> The Slayer. The Slayer was the first class that I ever really delved into, um, and it's a really fun one. You just have a giant sword, and you're able to jump around and dodge as your kind of uh, secondary ability. It's a very mobile class, and you do a lot of damage, but again, you have like the light armor, so you're not going to be the tanky one. You're going to be the one who kind of jumps around and tries to attack the enemy without taking incoming damage. These guys are great when you're working with other people for being able to get around behind the enemy and attack from behind because then you do a lot more damage and a lot of your attacks will get bonus damage based on attacking from behind. The Berserker. This is the one that my main character is... Uh, is. <laughs> this is the one that my main character is. And it's been a really fun class. I was really skeptical whenever I first decided to be the kind of tank of the group, sort of tank. Uh, but I wanted to try it out. I had never really played that role before. It's not, I mean, it's not really a tank. Yeah, see, it's not really a tank. But they do a lot of damage and they have the heavy armor. So they can take a beating, all right. But they also do a lot of damage. They aren't ones that can like jump around a lot, but they can block. So it's pretty fantastic because you can just block incoming damage and then do your, like this, the attack that you just saw, the swinging blade, and do a whole lot of damage that way. It's pretty fun, pretty fun. A little bit more slow in terms of like when you're fighting something, but it's still rewarding because you're just chunking out, chunking out, chucking out a whole lot of damage. <laughs> the sorcerer. Now I have to admit, this is one of the classes that I have the least experience in. I played through like level 10 or something like that as a sorcerer once, but that's about it. So I haven't really gotten into this. It's, as you can see, burst DPS range, and they wear the lightest form of armor, the robes. So these guys are just ranged attack. They do burst attack damage, so they do a lot of damage, but not as frequently, not, or not as quickly, I guess. But they have a lot of different like effect damage, I think, like things like poisoning and fire and ice that can freeze things and stuff. So they have different options like that. They're pretty cool. I just haven't really delved into it. You have the archer, which is becoming one of my favorite classes. I mean, there's so many classes that I really enjoy, but I do really like the archer class because uh, I actually didn't try it out for a very long time. It wasn't until more recently that I actually made my first archer. And I really fell in love with it because this is where the combat of this MMO, which includes having to aim your attack using your mouse uh, as your view. Uh, I don't know how to explain that. But this takes into account aiming the most, I think. So it feels kind of like you're playing something like Minecraft. I mean, not really Minecraft, but like Skyrim or uh, what's another game? I can't think of other games at the moment. Like a first person shooter kind of where you actually have to shoot and aim at your targets. They are great for sustained DPS. So you do sustained damage. You can shoot pretty quickly though. You can also do things like lay traps for your enemies so that if they walk into it, Maybe they'll be stunned, maybe they'll be knocked unconscious, so you have a chance to either escape or to prepare for your next attack. So these guys are pretty... They do also have 
a dodging ability, I think, as one of their moves, but I don't think it's as much as some of the other ones, if I remember correctly. I could be wrong. Next up is the Priest. All right, the Priest is your classic healer. They're gonna, be, but they're pretty fun to solo too. I mean, I haven't gotten super far into a solo priest before. It's a little more challenging because you don't do as much damage. But the trade-off is that even though you might be having to work harder to actually kill whatever you're fighting, you can actually take some of the hits because you can just retreat for a moment, heal up, and then go back to what you were doing. They also have some fantastic options for like MP regeneration, so you don't really run out of mana necessarily because you can recharge it as you go, which is fantastic. In a party, they are essential. They are so useful because they can recharge the health as well as the mana of their group in order to make sure to kind of manage all of that for everyone in the party and make their jobs easier as they attack stuff. So they are a wonderful support. A lot of fun to play too because they have the ranged attacks as you can see in this little video down there. They're pretty fun. I like them a lot. And the Mystic, which the Mystic is probably the one that I am least interested in. And that's just personal taste. I know quite a few people that have tried it and really enjoyed it. The Mystic is kind of a varied support. So they can do a little more damage, I think, than your classic priest, but they still have healing abilities that make them an alternative support character instead of a priest, if you want. The cool thing about these guys, and it's actually a thing that I don't care for, but I think it's something that a lot of other people would like, is that you get basically this minion that follows you around and you can swap them out for different types of minions that do different things. So maybe you call him in and then he goes and does more attack damage for you, maybe attacks the enemy. Or it might be one that you set up that heals within a certain range of it. Like this guy right there. Or I guess that's an attacking one. But some of them will like heal you and stuff. So they, they're kind of cool. It's an interesting feature of the good old mystic. Like I said, I haven't really played around with it too much, but that's just kind of my impression of it. Uh, right here is the reaper. I don't... Let's see, I don't think I can even select it. Yeah, I can't select it, but it is... Uh, it is something that you can only do as an Alin. It is a, an Alin specific class. And honestly, I don't know a lot about it because I haven't gotten to look into it. But basically, they have two blades, kind of like a warrior, but they're on chains so you can throw them out and attack things from a distance or pull them towards you or pull you towards them or something like that. But they only unlock, you can only create a reaper after you've unlocked a level 40 character. I'm not sure if that has to be on the server or if it just has to be in the game as, as a whole. I'm not really sure on that one. But since my highest character is level 38, I'm still not quite there. I should be somewhat soon if we get to playing again. We'll see. And so that's the Reaper class. The last one, the Gunner. So this is the one that we're going to do today. Look at that huge gun. <laughs> Look, check out them guns. So the Gunner is the newest class, which they added a few months ago now, I guess. And it's a unique one in that it's like burst DPS, it's ranged, but it has heavy armor. So it's kind of interesting because the other ones that do ranged stuff usually have either uh, medium armor or light armor. And so this is like the new kind of semi-tanky ranged option. <laughs> from what I have experienced and from what I have heard, they do seem to be a little bit OP right now. They're a little bit... Uh, a little bit too powerful potentially based on how they were built but again i haven't played them in a few months so maybe they've adjusted things maybe they've kind of balanced it out uh i think that's pretty much everything i need to mention that was a lot of rambling but hopefully that was informative about what the different classes and races are and what they do it's all just based on my experience too so i could be wrong about some facts so let's go ahead and customize our gunner so we have our character customization here where we can look through here and then scroll in and scroll out so you can really get detailed with the face. Unlike most MMOs though, you cannot change the body type at all. You just choose your race and the gender and then that's your body. So you can't really adjust like the body shape, but you can do customization within the head basically and the skin and stuff. 
Now, one thing that is helpful for me whenever I'm designing a character is I like to go in here to the outfit and you can kind of preview what some of the armor looks like. I have found that Terra Logic, Terra Logic is that for females, uh, the higher level you are, typically the less armor you are wearing. <laughs> So they have some pretty scandalous outfits, not very modest, especially with the Kastanics. But, you know, we're gonna go with it. We're gonna roll with it. It'll be okay. But this way you can kind of get a preview of what some of the future options might be for your character. This is pretty awesome, though. I do like this one a lot. Those wings. Dim wings, though. Okay, so that's just a little preview to get an idea of, and you can see like the different armor types, so it's different if you have something that has robes or medium armor. Okay, so you can go into presets, and first you can kind of click through and see some different suggested options of things you might like. I actually quite liked that, that's kind of pretty. I was planning on doing this face, but I kind of want to, that's really pretty just like that. And I wanted to do this, they recently, so you go into features and that's like your hair, they recently added these three with the gunner class. So before that they didn't have those options. So, and this one kind of is similar to like my half buzzed head, so I thought it was kind of fun. I was like, well, maybe we'll go with that, might as well. They also have this one, which has the side braid, which is kind of cool. And they have this one. I do like the blue, it's quite pretty. So I think we'll go ahead and go with this. And then let's make it purple. They do have quite a few other colors. Ooh, I do like this blue color a lot too. Looks like winter. <laughs> that one's kind of pretty too. So yeah, you get quite a variety. It's different based on your race. So like the high elves and stuff don't have nearly as many rainbowy options. A lot of them are more blonde or white hair or something like that. So it's kind of different for each race. All right, let's go ahead and, and do the face, which uh, I don't think I'm going to change the face. I like this face, but we can change the skin color. Actually, that was the skin color I was planning on picking. But to show you kind of a range, you can get more pale, more color to it. You can get really dark too, which is pretty cool. Like that is pretty awesome. If you did something like that and the eyes kind of glow, almost like Riddick, it's pretty neat. But you can also go super light. You can go more olive tone, more of a pinky, more of a tan, orangey tone. It's pretty cool. I think I'm going to go with this one because it's kind of purpley but kind of light. And then we'll go with adornments. So this is where it's different based on the face that you have. But they have some different options for like makeup and stuff basically in your eyebrows and things. And your eye color as well is usually affected. I do like number three. Number five is nice too though. Ooh, I like this for the light eyes. That's really pretty. That one has purple eyes. Ooh, that's pretty too. Very pretty. So many nice options. Actually, I quite like these last two. Uh, I like this one, but it's not as lively. Let's go with this. It's kind of interesting. Maybe? Maybe. Like, let's look at three one more time. Oh, snap. Decisions. This is why it always takes me so long, because I really like a lot of the different... A lot of the different looks. Let's go with this one. It's kind of softer. I like it. Then, you can go into fine details, and this is where you can really... really customize their faces quite a bit, so you can, like, push out their brow line. Ooh, the sound it makes. <laughs> you can push out their brow line, or their cheekbones. You can make their jaw lower and wider if you want. <laughs> so you can really mess around with some of that stuff. Let's go ahead and lower it and let's bring it forward just a bit. It's maybe a little too much. Then you can go in and adjust their eyes, which currently they're very... You can widen them just a little bit. Let's lower them just a smidge. Now the thing that makes the biggest difference, even though you might see one and you're like, eh, it's all right, but it looks a little bit angry. Just go to this inner brow, outer brow, push it up, and suddenly, aw, aw, she just got nicer. <laughs> we just fixed her RBF a little bit. <laughs> 
So yeah, you can control some of that there. Ooh, make her sassy, super sassy. And then you can change like the angle of the eye even. That's awkward. It's awkward. Yeah, so that's pretty good. And their nose, you can do, let's make hers not quite that pointy. It's interesting that size is actually like up and down. It's really not intuitive to me. She has kind of a weird facial structure. It's a weird character that I've made. Um, the bridge, narrow, that's fine. Nostril width, make it super tiny or super big if you want. Tip width, do that. No step down up, we'll just keep it normal. Nostril flare. <laughs> Let's just put it right there. And then you can actually bend the nose, which I don't understand why people would want to do that, really. Uh, then the mouth, you can actually like lower or higher it on the face, which can make the face look quite a bit different. Mouth width, I'm going to keep it kind of less so. I'm going to close her mouth just a little bit. Plump up her lips a little bit. You can have their mouth be like open, like a mouth breather, or like super tight too. It's kind of fun. I'll make her pucker. And then you can make them like... <laughs> Hello, my name is Anisha and I like to shoot things. <laughs> <laughs> I like to have it a little bit lower. On the lower side. Something about these proportions that is bothering me. That's a little better. Okay, and then ears. You can like make them pointy uppy or down. We'll just go normal. And like... Aww. Look, she can fly! Fly, 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 my pretty! Let's have him go up with the horns, kind of. And then you can bring him, like, forward. So if you rotate, you can see... It's pretty cool that they have that much customization. Then you can make them little, tiny, or really big! Let's make hers, like, kind of big. She's got kind of big ears. Alright, so this is Ine. Then you go to the outfits, you can kind of preview your character like I mentioned before. Ooh, that looks pretty cool. Look at that. Super cool, super cool. And then you can choose between five voice options. That one's kind of feisty. And this one's great for the Alin. So I think we'll go with number two. It's kind of more generic, but it's easier on the ears, I think, when you're playing. Because <laughs> we're going to have to hear these sounds a lot. <laughs> Alright, let's go ahead and complete our character. Here we go. And then it will begin the initial story intro. The cutscenes here are beautiful, too. They also sometimes feature, like, fan art. There is a very active community, from what I've seen in terms of both development from the game developers as well as people who play the game. Pretty cool art community and stuff. The sundered gods and titans, destroying the world it was. Amid the tragedy, a single drop of hope coalesced to preserve one tiny part. Sheltered from time, a mystical tree grew, Giving fresh eyes the power to see the world as the gods once saw it. That's beautiful. The world's greatest scholars and magicians came to study the divine tree and protect it. Yeah, this is new. They magically erased the island from mortal records. But not before the forces of evil sent their own champion. Oh no! Womp womp womp. Not the daisy! You daisy stomper! Oh, interesting. And then you're right in. Wow, it's very different than it used to be. Oh, I just closed things because I'm so used to playing this. Uh, but I guess I could go ahead and... You know what? Let's wait and save the rest for later! Save the rest for later. So that's gonna be it for this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you guys next time as we go ahead and begin our brand new Gunner character in Terra.